Hey everybody, welcome back to Champ and Sons in our NCAA 24 Coaching Dynasty Series where we have just finished our first career of, or first season of our career as the offensive coordinator for the Mean Green, leading them to a 9-4 and four season. Um, we did sign a new contract with them. They gave us an extension for about five more years. But in college, you can always look for other contracts. Now, I wasn't planning on going to the coaching carousel, but it is one of those, you just want to see what's out there. Take a shot in the dark. Maybe the grass is going to be greener on the other side. You don't always know, right? So that that's one of the things that we're trying to look at here um, as we go through. Maybe someone takes on our coach and it opens up an opportunity for us, but Maybe also we get an offensive coordinator position at a bigger school. I mean, as much as I love the Mean Green, who's not? Who wouldn't take that opportunity, right? Who wouldn't want to go say, "Let me, let me turn down a job at a bigger Power Five school for Mean Green, so we can try to build something here." Our our career is we got to build ourselves up, right? We care about the team, but at the same time we got to do what's best for us. You know what I mean? So. Looking at some of these jobs that are coming up, we are seeing some big uh, head coaching opportunities going to be available. Now, going through this coaching carousel, this first go-around, I know we've only had one year under our belt, so what are the odds of us getting something of any major value? Probably not going to happen, right? But really, it, it is one of those, hey, you never know, let's give it a shot. As we see, a lot of teams are really just extending their guys' contracts um, to try and, you know, but there are coaches leaving and switching schools, so that does open up opportunities. It's just whether or not we're going to be given one of those opportunities, I don't know. But that's why you come into the carousel, just want to see what's available that is out there. Now, some interesting jobs are coming up in the offensive coordinator realm. Um, Kansas head coach, they they... Oh, my God. They don't take our head coach. I wish they did. He's up for a couple different coaching positions, um, but he doesn't get selected to go anywhere. They, at least they don't offer him any other job at a place. So that that's making it kind of tough for us um, to try and get an opportunity. It's one of those things maybe we can get something to land, but I, I'm not seeing that possibly happen. Um right now at least you know one season into there's a lot of different job opportunities that are going to be available there's a bunch of unexpected job openings happening um alabama seem to have looks like they lost both their coordinators now i'm definitely not switching sides to the defense right that's i'm an offensive kind of guy that's what i stick with is going to be the offensive side but hey it's we we are going through and seeing some guys that some teams that do need head coaching opportunities that maybe we could try to fill in for. Um, if I am going to be offered something, I don't want to just take any job that's available, right? I, I want to take a job that's kind of helps to set up for success. You know, that that's, and, that, and that's something I think anybody would do in real life. Also, they're, they're going to not just take any job because it's better. They're going to take a job that helps set them up to be more successful. So that's kind of what we're looking at. Um, there are a couple Big Ten schools that are looking for coordinators, and each of them just forget about us. So that's lovely. That's great to be just passed over with such ease. Kind of knocks us back down to reality after a 9-4 and four season um, with our offense actually being one of the best in the country as far as passing offenses go. And rushing was in the top about 25, so... I think we did a good job. We we definitely proved ourselves as an offensive coordinator within um, Conference USA. So that that's saying what it is. Um, and some of these other schools aren't taking that for very much. As you can see, they're just not. I mean, most most of these schools, I'll give it to them, are really just re-signing the coaches that they had. Their contracts expired, so they're re-signing them or extending them. I guess if you want to say that. Um, which you can't blame a team for, but it's. Well, I, I think we did a good enough job to try and at least possibly earn something a little bit better. Um, so far, nothing though. 
everybody's just like, no, nope, we're not going to sign you. We're going to take someone else. <laughs> As you see, look at them just go. I mean, just constant. Not even an opportunity for some of these uh, offensive coordinator jobs. I don't know. Maybe they see something that I don't see myself. Um, and like I said, it could just be, hey, it's North Texas. So trying to go from North Texas to a Pac-12 coordinator spot, Big 12, Big 10. It's just not going to be – odds of that happening are just pretty low, I guess you could say. Um, but you, you got to get your foot in the door somehow. you got to make it work somehow. Um, as, as these jobs continue to pop up, and we just get passed over one by one in some of these things. Oh, here comes some more ACC. Louisville, they don't hire us. It's kind of disheartening, actually, as you see these job offers go. And this is what the coaching carousel is for guys who don't really do the coaching carousel all that much or just skip it. This is what it's like. It's a painstaking process of all these teams passing up on you. Um for a job opportunity knocks you back down to earth gives you a little gives you a little bit of humble pie you know what i mean as all these teams pass us over texas tech we were part of them before in the previous series um where we went from tennessee to tech to florida state so i had a pretty pretty crazy wild ride there and yeah looking at our opportunity they they wanted us for a second but they don't even offer it to us like we were, we we were right there, man, right there, and they choose not to offer us a job. Okay, and maybe that is because we signed the contract. I'm not really certain. Um, I'm not certain how that works. I wasn't about to come into this opportunity without a job, though. And look at this, Navy. Now we're getting somewhere. Navy wanting to offer us. Is that a head coaching job? Yeah, no, that was an offensive coordinator. Uh, position. I, I don't like Navy's offense. I really don't. So that's why I do turn that one down. Now, New Mexico, the Lobos, one star out of the Mountain West. They do offer us a head coaching job. But this is what I was talking about. Set up for success. Right? I am just really am not feeling New Mexico. I, I mean, say it for what it is, right? I, I'm just not feeling the Lobos pride i guess you could say <laughs> the desire to take that job um, i figure if, it, if nothing else comes up i'll just build it in north texas see what we can get now northwestern though we get an interesting offer from northwestern to be the offensive coordinator for them now keep in mind their record in the previous season was three and nine right but this is a team that has gone ten and three they have had winning seasons. They have been to Big Ten championship games. This is definite. Now, this is one that tickles my fancy, I guess you could say. Um, Northwestern, it is in a Power Five conference. And, yeah, we do accept this job. One year at North Texas, we do leave. We do. Uh, if you wanted us to be at the Mean Green, sorry. I got to do what's best for my coach. Um, and that is heading over to Northwestern power five school um getting getting them built up some and kind of putting my name out there even better now as far as recruiting goes we weren't a part of that for northwestern so it didn't really show that much as we got into signing day we got some good sign you know some good signings but nothing all that crazy i guess you could say right um this is our first look at our roster and seeing the development that we have with some of these guys and it, it's questionable you know, we have some speed on the wide receiver spot, not as much as I normally like. Our offensive line is pretty rough, and then that's something we're going to have to do some recruiting on is, is the offensive line and our defensive line. The trenches are going to be a struggle. They, they really are. So offensively, we're going to have to get the ball out quick. Um, we're the offensive coordinator, so we're not going to be playing the defense. But, man, we're going to have to get the ball out quick and get some dang points on the board. The defensive side, they got some decent guys over there with some speed in the cornerback realm. Uh, a couple guys around the 90s. One at a 91, another one at an 88. So it, it's definitely going to be a little interesting um, this first season looking at where offensively, like I said, our line play I think is really going to be a struggle. Um, so we're going to have to get the ball out quickly, but that's kind of what we do, right? I, I prefer to 
keep get teams off um, off pace. You know, let's let, let's kind of keep the uh, defense guessing which way are we going to go, and then hit them on the other side. And so I, I think if we get the right offensive players, receivers, running backs, quarterback, we can make things happen. And now we are looking right here, and there, there are a bunch of three-star guys that do really want to, at least we're their first school, right? Like So we're their primary interest school, which I think is good for us. Um, we do have a five-star receiver who has a second on his board. Um, so we obviously are going to recruit some of those guys, but what I do like seeing is the number of tackles that we have. We have a few three-star and four-star tackles that want to be a part of our team. And that's really what we got to go for and what we need to look at. I am seeing some of these two-star guys that I am trying to make some depth happen. That's really what that comes out to is going to be just trying to build in some depth on the offensive line. Um, so I do get try to recruit some two-star guys. But our board is filling up pretty quickly. Um, I'd finally take a one-star uh, tackle just to fill in some space, guys. But I, I do need depth in the offensive line. We got some good guys selected on up um, that were around a four star and higher up three stars that had us high on their board and their interest level. So that was good to see for us. And I think that really is going to kind of help us as we go here um, throughout our time with Northwestern is getting into those realms, getting into those areas. And becoming that team that I think we really can be. Now, our offense isn't going to change much. We are going to be running some, a lot of option offense. That helps out our running backs. It helps out our quarterback. They do take some hits, so he's going to have to toughen up. Helensky is our starting quarterback, at least for right now. He's going to have to toughen up a little bit coming into the next season, and he's going to have to work on his speed. But then again, I don't need him to get that much. You just give me an eight-yard rush. I don't need 20 yards. I just need eight yards every time. Okay. Um, so we're going to go ahead and finish off some, do some basic scouting for these guys. And some guys are dropping. I'm not liking seeing that, <laughs> you know, but I guess you'd rather know about a bust early, um, than you would later. I, I really am hoping that we can get some guys to step up and become, you know, that recruit that we were hoping they could be. These are a lot of these guys that are right here. These were the higher up first on our board or first on their board interest level um, our four stars and three stars that were higher up so it's interesting seeing a lot of them kind of drop down as we were as we are scouting them we find the few guys like Troy Williams a defensive back bust up to 68 um, some guys are improving Jordan Dorch the tackle becoming a 69 overall that's someone that we're definitely going to have to look at and try to hit hard on the recruiting trail to get this team built properly so now taking a look at our schedule it is a c plus difficulty kind of schedule right that i mean ranking wise in the game the strength of schedule doesn't totally matter all that much um if you play this game enough you kind of know yeah it feels good to say our strength of schedule is an a but in reality if you win your games you're going to get the ranking you want um, it's just that simple. But one thing we will do is we are going to put the mean green on our schedule at home to take them on in week one. We did leave them. We're going to give them their shot to throw the punch back at us. I, I just feel like that's what should happen, right? We should take on our old foe, um, see what they're like after one season of us working with them. I think they are going to be massively improved versus when we took them over. So, But North Texas on. And then I really want to add in some more difficult schools to play. Um, some bigger name schools. That's actually something that does help out with recruiting. Gets through, And it would help out in real life, right? You get the big name schools to come to you uh, for uh, the season. These are things kids are going to pay attention to. It gets you on national TV. It gets you focused. Um, it gets attention on, and that's really what we need. If we're going to start bringing in players to compete with the Ohio States, Michigans, Penn States, um, and as far as the conference makeup going, you we're talking USC has been added in, UCLA, getting all these guys added in. It, 
you're competing with some high profile schools and the best way to do that is to get yourself on national television play well and try to win some of these games so we need to add in another non-conference game and it's looking for a team that would be a decent matchup right um and that, that's why we do I down Bay or BYU. They are number twenty five. It's something that I think is, it would be a top twenty five win, right? It just it would be. Um, so I think it's something we definitely need to look at doing. So we do switch out. So instead of having the first three games at home, um, we do make Notre Dame be the game on the road for right now, and. I also, one thing I also want to do is try to squeeze in a, uh, try to squeeze in a neutral site game. That's another thing I want to add in, is a neutral site game. And so that's why we do go with the rivalry game in Illinois. I've seen on this uh, little stadium selector thing, there's an option for Soldier Field um, in Illinois, both the, in Chicago, both these schools are in Illinois. There it is. So that's what we are going to go with. Um, play them at Soldier Field, another big profile stadium. Put ourselves on national television. Get ourselves some recognition, and hopefully come out of there with a win. So our st- season is going to be kind of tough. We went from a C plus to a B plus schedule, um, but I think it's one that we can really build on and become a positive team with. So that's how we are going to go. New season, new team coming up in the next episode, everybody. I will see y'all in that episode. So as always, stay safe. And well, y'all know how it goes by now, right? Later, y'all.